Well, I'm grateful for a chance to spend a few minutes with you today. Uh, we're going to be looking at Psalm chapter 7, but let me just say before we jump into Psalm 7 that um, if, again, you're having a hard time with anything or you need to talk to someone, please don't wait for someone to call you. You call us and let us know. As much as we may try to keep up with uh, people, um, we are not perfect and we have a hard time just keeping up with the people that uh, and our responsibilities so well hope you're having a good day glad to be able to spend a few minutes with you and before we jump into Psalm 7, let me just uh, say to you that if you're having a hard time or you're having a difficult time trying to figure something out, especially if you're discouraged, uh, please give one of us pastors a call. Um, please don't wait until we call you. Uh, you just take the initiative, give us a call, text us some way, just reach out to us. And uh, we'd be very glad to spend whatever amount of time uh, would be helpful to you. Well, we're in Psalm 7 today, and uh, it's an interesting psalm in that it's a, kind of, in some ways, a complaint of David because of him being attacked, probably even slandered or criticized for sure, and and. And yet it becomes a helpful vehicle for any of us when we're unfairly criticized or slandered as a way of setting our heart right with the Lord. And that's the beauty of what the Psalms do for us. So turn over to Psalm chapter 7 if you've got a copy of God's Word close at hand there. And, uh, and let's, let's take a look at it. You'll notice that the subtitle on this psalm, Psalm 7 is uh, Shigayon of David. We don't know exactly what that means. Most suspect that it's some kind of a term that describes something that is musically to be done, but we don't really know. It comes from the idea of a wine press, and uh, that seems to be one of the most closely related words, which may mean this is this is just an expression of a heart that seems like it's in the wine press seems like it's being refined uh, it is of david which he sang to the lord concerning the words of cush a benjamite now we don't know who cush was uh, saul king saul was a benjamite maybe it was something related to uh, david being persecuted by saul um, we just don't know, and we don't have to know, uh, because God will use his word without us knowing those kinds of details. So let me, let me just uh, kind of work our way down through it rather than reading the whole thing, and then we'll uh, just see how the Lord might want to use that, since we know we are going to be criticized, we're going to be slandered, we may even have people try to do physical harm to us, and this psalm is, again, a really good, helpful model for how to put our hearts in a good place with the Lord. Well, he begins by saying, O Lord, my God, in you do I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me, lest like a lion they tear my soul apart, rending it in pieces with none to deliver so David begins here with the covenant name of God, Yahweh, the one who is given his promise of his protection and uh, presence and everything else. The one who is the I am. What do you need? I am that for you. And he links that up with my God, Elohim, the name for God that uh, causes us to think of him as the creator the all-powerful one. So here we have David begin with the personal name of God and the name of God that represents his power, the one that he's in covenant with, as well as the creator of all things. And he just begins by saying, in you I take refuge. 
This is going on towards me, but in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me, because if you don't, they will be like a lion. And notice he doesn't say that will tear my body apart here. Will tear my soul apart. Will wreak havoc, havoc with my inner person, and and cause uh, cause me to be ripped apart inside. And if you don't deliver me, there is none to deliver. And then he goes in the next few verses, and he says, if there is any sin in my heart that has contributed to this, then I deserve your discipline. Listen, oh Lord, my God, if I have done this, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my friend with evil or plundered my enemy without cause, then... Let the enemy pursue my soul and overtake it, and let him trample my life to the ground and lay my glory in the dust. And you get the sense from this that David is recognizing that if he's a contributor to this, he deserves the justice of God. But it's very clear here that he doesn't believe that is the case. He believes that he is being unf unjustly criticized and slandered and attacked. And so he says in verse 6, Arise, O Yahweh, O Lord, in your anger, lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake for me. You have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered about you over it return on high. And so he just asked God to arise and be the judge who who brings the the discipline to the ones who are in sin and who frees the ones who are innocent. David clearly sees himself as the one who is innocent here and again just recognizes that it is God who's the judge and he and asking God to arise, which is quite a request to make. I'd be hesitant to make it, but here we have David making it. And then a settling of the truth that it is God who judges all people. The Lord judges the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. And again, he's going back to, if I have sinned, then I deserve this. But now he's stating very positively, or in the positive sense, he doesn't believe that's the case in this, or that's the case in this situation. He believes that he has lived out righteously and he is being falsely accused. On the other hand, oh, let the evil of the wicked come to an end, and may you establish the righteous. You who test the minds and hearts, O oh, righteous God. God alone tests the minds and hearts. He alone that knows what's going on. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah says this about Jesus Christ when he comes. He will not judge by what he sees. He will not judge by what he hears. Why? Because he judges the intentions, the thoughts of our heart. He sees beyond that because of his perfect righteousness. My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge and a God who feels indignation every day. We've seen this picture of the shield before. Uh, we saw previously he shields us with his favor. David again, who had carried a shield into many a battle, says, God, you are my shield. You save the upright in heart. You are a righteous God, and you, God, feel indignation every day. And so I can relax in my indignation because you're a God who feels indignation. And then he he says, if a man does not repent, God will wet his sword. He'll get his sword ready. He has bent and readied his bow. He has prepared for him his deadly weapons, making the arrows fiery shafts. God is an avenger. God is a just God. 
And here again, he uses the picture of a warrior. He'll wet his sword. He'll bend his ready bow. He is ready to shoot his arrows. And then he uses three pictures of evil people and the consequences that come to them. Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head, and on his own skull his violence descends. That's the truth about the wicked. God judges. And on the other side of the equation, the wicked, who is pregnant with mischief and, and gives birth to lies, all they're doing is digging their own pit that they will fall into. And the mischief that they plan for others will return upon their own head. And so how does King David land this entire psalm? How does he land his own heart? I will. This is his choice. This is the choice that we all face. After all is said and done of recounting the righteousness of God and the evil of other people, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. You see, even with us, when people attack us falsely and slander us and, and maybe physically try to do us harm, it's good for us to process even as David does here, but it's really important that we make the choice. When all is said and done, and after the expressions of our heart, we make the choice, I will, I will give to the Lord, to Yahweh, the thanks due to his righteousness. Oh, that's a lot of thanksgiving because he's absolutely perfectly righteous. And I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. And here again, we see the value of singing praises to the Lord. And here David is saying, I'm going to lift my eyes off of the one, this one of Cush, a Benjamite. And I'm going to look at your righteousness. I'm going to give thanks for your righteousness, O Lord. And I'm going to sing praise to your name. Oh, that's always the place to land because he's the covenant God. He's the creator God. He's the one who has promised to care for us and to love us. And he's the one that has the power to do it. So let me encourage you today. Maybe somebody has falsely accused you. Maybe there's slander going around about you. Land your heart where David landed his and spend some time, spend several minutes. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness. Begin to give him thanks for his righteousness. And I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. And you might want to just look up some praise music, some of the songs or hymns, and, and let them Sing with them if you don't feel good about singing praises to yourself, uh, by yourself to the Lord. But choose to do these two I wills today in whatever circumstances that you're in. God bless you. May God be the fullness of who he is to you today in whatever situation you're in.